Welcome to this video on Bluetooth, a technology that is basically used uh, every day to connect uh, devices like headphones and smart watches to uh, devices like computers and smartphones respectively. So uh, that makes those devices like headphones and smart watches really portable. They can be used uh, while moving freely at least in the same room you can say. So today we will see this technology in terms of its architecture, the applications possible, the Bluetooth protocol stack will be studied, uh, specifically we will uh, see in detail the radio and the link layers, ultimately we will see the frame structure. We will started with a company called as Ericsson with four uh, other companies, IBM, Intel, Nokia and Toshiba, they formed what is called as an SIG, uh, a special interest group, a consortium you can say, in 1998, uh, so as to develop a wireless standard so that they could interconnect computing and communication devices and accessories over a short range using low power uh, inexpensive wireless radios. So that project was named after Harald Blattan II, uh, a Viking king who uh, unified Denmark and Norway also without uh, cables. And that's why that uh, technology was named after uh, Blattan or Bluetooth because that technology also does not require cables. So after forming that SIG in 1998, in July 1999, a Bluetooth version 1.0 came, which allowed most of the consumer electronic devices to communicate using this technology. The theoretical maximum speed provided was 1 Mbps, practically it was somewhat lesser than that. Here a technique called as pairing was used, which uh, uh, let the devices find and connect to each other and securely transfer the data. Uh, Bluetooth 2.0 came into 2004 which uh, with the te technology called as EDR, Enhanced Data Rate, allowed uh, sp uh, speeds up to 2 to 3 Mbps. It supported both basic as well as the EDR. So, in 2009, the next version, Bluetooth 3.0 came, uh, which allowed device pairing in combination with the standard 802.11, which allowed high throughput data transfer, where the speeds up to 24 Mbps uh, was possible. In December 2009, uh, the version Bluetooth 4.0 came, which basically allowed uh, devices like uh, some low power uh, sensors, they could be used. Uh, I mean, basically this technology or this version of Bluetooth 4.0 required low power operation for these devices. I mean, it saved the battery drain of those devices. Previously, uh, the battery I mean the power consumption was more than that. With this Bluepoint 4.0, that battery consumption tremendously reduced. In uh, December 2016, the next version Bluetooth 5.0 and 6.0 came, which were specific, specifically aimed at IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, it improved uh, flexibility of the range and the battery that was required for the devices like as we have just seen low power sensors sensors with uh, uh, slow speed I mean uh, that basically allowed uh, a trade-off between the range and speed with uh, less speed the devices could have been placed far apart I mean the range was increased and with uh, smaller range high speed data could have been transferred so that flexibility was there coming to the architecture of bluetooth 
uh, it basically consists of a pico net uh, tdm unit time division multiplexing unit which consists of a master device and at the most seven slave units so they are connected to uh, the slaves are connected to the master the connection is always master to slave i mean there is no connection between two or more slaves that basically implements the client server technology you can see uh, here the slaves are dumb to make the overall infrastructure less expensive they simply follow whatever the master tells us uh, tells them so this is what is called as the pico net the master will be defining some time slots and using those time slots uh, the slaves will be communicating with that so that is what is called as a pico net now there may be uh, in a pico net means the slaves will be communicating with that master in a specific range 10 meters you can see so 10 meter is the range if that slave is in that range that can communicate with the master now in a large room there can be multiple such pico nets having their own masters as shown and uh, when two such pico nets are connected to each other that is what is called as a scatter net and forming that scatter net is possible by having a bridge slave as can be seen here that bridge slave is a slave which happens to be in the range of both the masters so that this particular bridge can communicate with this master and the same uh, slave can communicate with the second master so that is what is called as the bridge slave a slave that connects piconet one with piconet second and that forms a scatter net now as you have just seen in a piconet there can be one master and uh, up to a maximum of seven slaves in all eight devices will be there so in addition to those seven slaves a piconet can have some parked slaves up to a maximum of 255 parked uh, slaves basically means that uh, they are there with a low power state they are basically kept in that state to reduce their battery death in that particular past state a device cannot do anything except responding to an activation or what is called as a beacon signal from the master so this allows the device to remain in a low power consumption state whenever the master calls for with an activation or beacon signal that device will be activated coming to the applications uh, here a strange thing is that uh, for any model if you can consider the OSI model or TCP IP that basically defines how that model is it does not say anything how the applications uh, are to be developed ironically in Bluetooth the Bluetooth protocol or standard defines which applications to use which protocols and how they should be defined they should be developed with what protocols uh, so we'll see some some of the applications some uh, representative applications in all there are 25 such applications we will not see all of them but some representative so first uh, is a generic access the generic access basically defines procedures for link management so the procedures for establishing and managing the links will be present here service discovery next application it's a protocol uh, they'll be using a protocol for discovering the device services which are offered next is serial port uh, you know that uh, the devices like mouse and keyboard they communicate with the computer using a serial port cable so this particular application will be replacing that cable or mimicking that cable in eff effectively replacing that using the wireless Bluetooth technology next is generic object exchange 
that defines uh, client server relationship for object movement here who is giving that object to whom that relationship will be defined well, who is client and who is server next is lan access here uh, that allows uh, a mobile computer to be connected uh, to a fixed lan into a fixed lan next is dial up networking that allows a notebook computer to call via a mobile phone or modem you can say fax uh, allows a mobile fax machine to talk to a mobile phone cordless telephony connects a handset and its local base station so in a room you might have used that cordless telephony where there is a base uh, wireless base there and you can uh, maneuver in the room uh, speaking using the headset intercom which is digital walkie talkie a uh, popular application is the headset which most of uh, us are using intended to for uh, hands free voice communication you can simply uh, connect that headset with the device like computer or mobile phone and uh, communicate object push provides a way to exchange simple objects that may be images videos or things like that a devoted file transfer application is also there that provides a more general file transfer facility and the last is uh, that we'll see is synchronization wherein a uh, device like a pda or mobile can, can be synchronized with uh, some computer at the in the morning you can simply synchronize that pda with the computer go uh, to office and at the end of the day when you come back you can once again uh, whatever file that you are taken into that mobile can be synchronized once again back to the computer so that's a synchronization coming to the protocol stack used uh, if you simply see this model or protocol stack you'll come to know that even though it uh, resembles the osi and uh, the tcp ip very loosely uh, it is having some somewhat common things but not all the first uh, layer there is the radio layer which is used for radio transmission and modulation which is having some aspects of physical layer of osi then is the link control or the baseband layer this link control basically is used for uh, as we just seen previously the master uses the time slots so controlling the time slots and fitting different frames to those uh, time slots uh, this link control or baseband layer will be used next is the link manager uh, layer the link manager uh, protocol basically is used for establishing the link the communication channel and things like pairing the encryption uh, and so on there is a host controller interface as can be seen with this uh, dashed line that basically used to uh, differentiate the uh, the protocol stack between the protocols means the protocols or the layers below the host controller interface these things will be implemented on the bluetooth chip whereas the protocols above that host controller interface line will be implemented into the device that host that bluetooth chip so that's why the host controller interface line will be used now as you have seen uh, just to recap radio layer uh, is basically loosely similar to the physical layer next is the link control which is similar to a sub layer of osi which is called as the medium access control or a max sub layer which uh, we have not seen yet we'll see in the next topic uh, next protocol here is that l2 cap logical link 
control adaptation protocol which uh, has got some aspects of the data link layer of OSI. Now L2 cap or logical link control adaptation Pro protocol uh, basically has got many functions we'll see in detail afterwards but that is basically giving the framing ability as well as gives some kind of reliability we'll see in detail this l2 cap protocol is used by some other uh, protocols like rfcom and service discovery for example the service discovery protocol is used to uh, look for discover various services offered in the same 10 meter range the rfcom is basically mimicking the serial port communication you can use uh, this rfcom protocol to connect serial devices like mouse keyboard etc there are uh, various applications possible as we have just seen previously so in they are they are in the upper layers and each of the application is shown to be here as a box a profile simply because each application profi profile will be using only a subset of the overall uh, protocols which are possible which are usable for that application specifically it will not be using all the protocols as the case was there with OSI or TCP IP let me repeat a profile will be using only those protocols out of all possible in the Bluetooth protocol stack the protocols which are usable or required for that particular application for example uh, whenever that application requires packet transfer that L2 cap may be used whenever the application um, requires audio the transfer of audio samples only that L2 cap uh, may not be used things like that so this is about the Bluetooth uh, protocol stack now we will uh, go detail into the radio layer of this protocol stack or the model as we have just seen the basic function is to transfer bits from master to slave and uh, vice versa the overall intention was to have a low power system within a range of 10 meters operating in the uh, 2.4 gigahertz ism band which is basically used by the 802.11 as well here a technique called as frequency hopping spread spectrum which we have seen in the previous lecture is used that allows uh, these communication to coexist with other networks using the same ism band the overall band is divided into 79 channels each of 1 megahertz now there can be up to 1600 hops per second over slots within uh, that basically gives a timing for each of the sl slot uh, 625 microsecond each of the slot will be having a time of 625 microsecond now uh, for all the nodes in the same pico net there will be hop, uh, hopping frequencies at the same time what is hopping frequencies they will be simply changing the frequencies of the overall bands band uh, within a band there will be multiple frequencies and the nodes will be hopping or they will be changing between those frequencies now the slaves will be simply obeying the master in terms of which hop or which particular frequencies to hop and for what uh, time slot that will be dictated that will be given by the master here as we have seen here the <clears throat> bluetooth is used in along with the same 802.11 uh, and that's why there may be some interference or there is an interference that basically cancels the overall communication and that's a harmful that's why and to reduce this cancellation uh, a technique called as adaptive frequency hopping is used which uh, is for the Bluetooth to adapt its hop sequence 
to exclude channels on which there are other radio frequency signals for example if 802.11 is 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 used being in combination with bluetooth bluetooth not, will not be using the channels used by 802.11 so that's an adaptation next are the bluetooth link layers we'll specifically see the two things that we have seen previously here we have seen the link layers the link control the baseband layer the link manager and uh, logical link control adaptation protocol the first the link control or the baseband layer this is similar to the mac sub layer as we have just seen the main function is to convert the raw bit stream or split that bit stream into different frames and define some key formats here uh, master defines uh, defines some time slots where the master transmission are there into even slots and the slaves transmissions are there into the odd ones each of the frame can be either one slot three slots or five slots long i mean the frame can be uh, placed into one slot the frame can encompass uh, that can uh, belong as long as the five uh, three slots and that can even be as long as the five slots now hopping occurs only between frames that does not ever occur during a frame so if these are two consecutive frames hopping will occur here that will never occur here within a frame and that's why a five slot frame is much more efficient than a one slot frame why because now the frame will be consuming five slots and as hopping never occurs between frames only after five slots a frame that is long as long as five slots the hopping will occur and that's why there will be no hopping we uh, for the previous four slots after the four fifth slot hopping will be uh, implemented and for every hopping there is an overhead associated a less number of hoppings means less overhead and that's why it is five slot frame is much more efficient the next is the link manager protocol that is basically used to set up the logical channels which are called as links they carry frames between the master and slave uh, as we have previously seen there are uh, two kinds of pairing procedures the pairing procedure is basically uh, used to make sure that the two devices are allowed to communicate before the link can be used uh, if that pairing was not there uh, we couldn't guarantee that which device is communicating whether that was allowed or not and that pairing uh, makes control on this which device can communicate now there are two types of pairing uh, where the old pairing method simply uh, allows the user to set a pin for both the devices here it's a it's an insecure approach because user users always are setting pins like 0 0 0 0 or 1 2 3 4 that makes the pins and the overall channel insecure anybody can simply um, have a brute force approach simply guessing like pin if you can set the pin as 0 0 0 that device may be connecting and that's why it is insecure approach here the user sets the pin in the new simple pairing method which is more secure than this this uh, confirms that both devices are displaying the same passkey here the user will not be setting the pin rather the devices will be generating the pins and the user has to simply confirm that the same pins are being displayed uh, i mean the same passkeys or the same pins are displayed being displayed on the devices otherwise uh, the if the one device is generating that passkey or the pin the same 
pin which is generated by one of the device has to be entered onto the second. It is secure because user is not involved in the generation of that particular pin. But uh, unfortunately, for some uh, limited capacity devices, for example, hand, uh, hands free headset, that pin generation and uh, yeah, there is no entry uh, possible, and that's why for those, this uh, technique is not possible. Now, there are two types of uh, links or prominent two types. One is called as SCO, Synchronous Connection Oriented Link. That is used for real-time data, for example, telephone communication. Now, in this, uh, it has got allocated a fixed slot in each direction uh, in the two parties. A slave may have up to three SEO links with its master. Now, this is a real-time application. The data will be flown in real-time and that due to this time-critical nature, frames sent over the them are never retransmitted. Simply a technique called as forward error correction will be used that does not require the lost frames to be retransmitted. The second type is ACL, the asynchronous connection less link. This is used for applications which are uh, reliability sensitive, for example, packet switch data uh, that is available at irregular intervals. Here the time is not that important, rather the reliability is more important. Here the delivery is on a best effort basis. No guarantees as such are given. Frames can be lost and may have to be retransmitted for uh, improving the reliability. A slave may have only one SEL link to its master in contrary to the three links possible in SEO. The data sent over SEL links come from the L2 cap layer. And now for the L2 cap we'll see there are four major functions. First, the packets which can be up to 64 KBs which are received from the upper layers they are broken into frames for retransmission as we have seen previously in the OSI layer as well. Whatever data which are received from the upper layers are divided into frames by the data link layer. Similarly, here the L2 cap layer will be dividing those packets into different frames. At the other end, the same L2 cap layer will be combining those frames into packets and will be giving to the upper layers. Here, uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing of different packet sources. For example, uh, the uh, as we have seen, the packets may be obtained from RFCOM or the service discovery protocols. Those will be broken into frames at this layer, and at the receiver side, whatever packets are, uh, whatever frames are being received at L2 cap, the L2 cap layer has to identify where that particular uh, packet has to be sent to RFCOM, to service discovery or something else. Next is error control and retransmission. Uh, here errors are possible because it's uh, a cheap inexpensive uh, device with the less computing ability. So errors are possible, error control has to be there. And for the sequence numbers, where the frames which are not acknowledged, the retransmission is required. Now it also enforces quality of service requirements between the multiple links. So these are the functions of the L2 cap layer. Coming to the frame structure, here uh, two frame structures are shown one with the basic rate which is given at top and one with the EDR the enhanced data rate which is shown at the bottom all uh, both these are given with the same time slot means they are divided I mean they are they are consuming five slots five different slots will be uh, used by each of the frame the common thing uh, between them, between these two frame format formats is the first two uh, things we can say. The first is access code 
of 72 bits which is common for both the formats and header of 54 bits after this there will be a data part a payload part which in the case of the basic data rate can be having 240 to 2744 2744 bits maximum they are sent at the basic rate in the case of the enhanced uh, EDR or the enhanced data rate the payload may consist of 0 up to 8184 8184 bits the payload this is because in the case of basic where one bit is representing one uh, sample or symbol in the case of EDR there are either two or three bits for representing each sample that's why the payload increases by uh, a factor of 2 or 3. Now in the case of uh, EDR only the access code and header part is sent at the basic rate and the data part or the payload part is sent at the enhanced rate. Let me repeat only this payload part will be sent at the enhanced rate. The rest of the things will be sent at the basic rate only. And that's why there is a speed gap between this part and the payload part. And to synchronize this, a field called as guard or synchronization will be used, which is of 16 bits, which is basically manages the speed gap between the basic rate and the enhanced uh, data rate of payload. Where the payload is sent at enhanced data rate, that is always ending into a trailer of 2 bits. Coming to uh, the header, the header has got first three bits of address. Let me go back to access code. So access code basically allows the slaves to identify the master. There may be multiple masters in the same room or within the same 10 meter distance. So which master the frames can be accepted from, the packets can be accepted from that master can be identified with this access code of 72 bits by the slaves. Now coming to the header, it has got only 10 bits of information. The address is 3 bits. Next is uh, the type which identifies uh, the type of that frame that can be either uh, SEO, ACL that we have just seen or that can be poll or null these are the four possible types that also identifies what error control technology error detection technology is being implemented and it also says how many different slots are used for each individual frame one three or five these are the four bits which define that next uh, bit is f that is used for uh, flow control here a slave if the buffer of that slave is full that will be setting this bit just to let the master know that it cannot act the slave cannot accept more data at that time so this is a primitive form of flow control the next bit one bit is acknowledgement here while transferring the frame the acknowledgement for the previous frame can be piggybacked uh, as the uh, frame is being sent that can be uh, the acknowledgement can be piggybacked so that's why that acknowledgement uh, bit one bit is there uh, the next is sequence number sequence number is also one bit there may be uh, retransmissions required and for that the sequence number is uh, required as the protocol is one bit stop and wait that's why one bit of uh, sequence number and acknowledgement number is enough so this is in all the 10 bits of information or the actual header which also has got 
CRC cyclic redundancy check of 8 bits and all these 18 bits of header is repeated 3 times so making that uh, that header of 54 bits when the receiver receives that header it checks to see whether all the 3 uh, copies match in all those bit positions if they match that header will be taken as it is otherwise if they do not match uh, the bits where they match in majority those will be taken as valid positions or valid valid bits for example out of 3 if uh, for 2 frames it is set that f is set that will be taken as 1 otherwise uh, 0 so only a 10 bits of information is transferred using 54 bits this is so done because as you have just seen the reliability is not there inexpensive devices with low computing capacity are used there may be possibility of uh, errors uh, and that's why this redundancy is used to reduce those errors so this is about the frame format frame structure with this uh, we have uh, seen today the bluetooth technology different uh, applications the architecture the model uh, we have uh, specifically seen the radio layers and the link layers and ultimately the frame structure was seen the resources regarding this will be available on the blocks my blog at vishalparkar.blogspot.com and you already know the channel so thank you